Instagram. It's me, Yessie, and... Mario! <laughs> it's a me, Mario! Wait, wait, no. He is Bob Muchacho. There you go. You guys did not see his face. You guys don't know who he is. He's Bob Muchacho. If FBI is trying to find him, he's Bob Muchacho. What is hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT, is breathing 100% oxygen while under increased atmospheric pressure. Under these conditions, your lungs can gather much more oxygen than it would be possible breathing pure oxygen at normal pressure. Hyperbaric oxygen chambers can help with something called angiogenesis, which is the development of new blood vessels. And if there's more oxygen flowing through your blood vessels, it has a propensity for helping oxygenate more cells and even heal certain tissues. So Buddy's gonna talk to you about his experience with hyperbaric chamber treatment. Well, like they said, the ones you were doing are soft chambers and those are new to me. That's also interested in what you were doing, but uh, usually, I use it for diving, uh, for work, and I've done that 13 something years now, so, but we need it for decompression, and it's just, it's something you need to do when you're, when you're diving, you know, past a certain depth, but, uh, it's also, what, what you're getting into, it's also used outside of that for, uh, for treating wounds, uh, I've, I've seen it done for, uh, burn victims, a lot of firefighters use it, you know, for their, their burn victims, um, they recommend that treatment, uh, because, uh, injuries, they heal 50% faster under 100% oxygen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys, this kid is like literally taking over. So, we're gonna backtrack. Um, buddy here, we, I call him Buddy, we call him Buddy. He's like, he's like part of the fam. Um, but he is an underwater welder, so he works in a high risk environment where he's diving like I don't know how many thousand feet, not thousand, no. but like, <laughs> I know, I know, but like. It's just enough like, to need hyperbaric uh, treatment. Yeah. yeah. If you're a diver. Uh, but that's what we were talking about is that's, that's how I use it for my work, uh, where it's necessary for you to come out and decompress, but it can also be used for what you're doing it for. It's just, if you have any kind of ailments, it can be used for a bunch of other yeah. stuff. Uh, but like I said before, I, I've seen it used for burn treatments. Uh, your, your injuries heal 50% faster under, 100% of O2, which is what you're, you're breathing when yeah. you're doing the treatment. But um, like anyone else, you can do it for a bunch of other reasons. You know, yeah. if you have any other kind of ailments, they, it helps a lot. So if you do the soft uh, chambers like I'm doing, um, the pressure that you're gonna have is not gonna be as um, high as if you're gonna do the hard chambers. So you get more benefits out of the hard chambers, but you're still getting good benefits out of the soft uh, chambers, which is the one I'm doing. And I, you know, there's, I have my reasons, my memory and low iron. Hard hyperbaric chambers are approved by the FDA to treat many conditions, some of which I'm going to list right here. Air or gas embolism, carbon monoxide poisoning and smoke inhalation, central retinal artery occlusion, chronic refractory osteomyelitis, crush injury or other acute trauma ischemias, decompression sickness, diabetic low extremity wounds, felt skin grafts and flaps, gas gangrene, necrotizing soft tissue infections, non-healing wounds, radiation tissue damage, severe anemia, sudden sensory neural hearing loss, and thermal burns. Now the following conditions have not yet been approved by the FDA and are not covered by insurance. Always talk to your doctor if you're planning on trying something new, especially a hyperbaric chamber session. Just make sure to be very well informed. I'm not a doctor. This is just information that I was able to find on, on various different websites. And um, yeah, so just, you know, go ahead and inform yourselves more on hyperbaric treatment if it is something that is intriguing and you want to try out. The list goes on for the things that are not approved by FDA, but they still have a, a lot of benefits because you have something called angiogenesis, which is the production of new blood vessels in your body to help you get a deeper oxygenation to your, your tissues, whether it be like your brain tissues or your skin. So you might have like a more glowing appearance if you do hyperbaric <laughs> chamber. <laughs> At least I feel like I've gotten more glow, if you will. There's a lot of benefits to it. It's, it's. I guess we're just talking about it as an option. Like, it's a, it is another option if you do want to try it. Uh, look into it. Um, 
do your homework about it and see if it's going to help with whatever you know you might have uh, and and go for it try it out there's no real negative to it uh, and it's you know, it's there it's just another way to help you if you if you want it. yeah so. how many sessions have you been in i don't know it's been 13 <laughs> years so who knows how many years. <laughs> 13 whole years yeah it's i was and you used to, to do it like every day if if you have to if you're on a job where you need it every day then yeah we pretty much every time we dive then you get in you get out get in get out it's a lot less i don't know the the uh i guess the way we do it offshore is a lot more direct mm -hmm. and it's not as uh i don't know I, I don't know your experience with how they dealt with it where you where you did it i feel like like when you walk in what what is it what's the experience like if somebody was asked you what what so do you go through when you're the there? The facility that I went through, um, they're called Beach City's Cryo, and they actually, they're very welcoming. This is not sponsored. I bought my, my hyperbaric sessions through Groupon, and um, so far this, I've had like three, three sessions, and I get them like about every two weeks. So, so far so good. My first time that I went in, I was so excited. I was like, yeah, you know, I came out of there kind of tired. Um, some people say that they, they're hungry after a session, yeah. right? Tired and hungry. But I wasn't too hungry, I was just tired for like a little while. And then, um, like maybe like an hour or so later, I had like so much energy that I was like, I don't even know what to do. So I completed like three different projects and I was just, you know, it was great. Um, but yeah, like if you go to a facility, uh, hopefully they can walk you through like what is it that they have. Because they also have the, the oxygen mask that they offer and that's like 100% 100, 100 oxygen. Like he is just making all the noise. I'm gonna take a video. More. So you you don't have enough eggs to make noise. Put the chicken in there. Like <laughs> Liam, what are you doing, sir? Oh my goodness. Um. Okay. So where were we? <laughs> oh. So that was my first session, right? Is that what I was talking about? So I came out, I had a lot of energy, and I felt great. The soft chamber that I go in, it only does like 4 PSI, whereas the, the hard chamber does... They'll, they'll vary in, uh, in the depths, but yeah, it, it can also be used for, for any depth, pretty much from where you're at now, from one atmosphere on up. It doesn't really matter what chamber you're in, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna get the same thing mm -hmm. out of both. My second time doing the hyperbaric chamber, treatment I was really tired because I had just gone out of work so I was exhausted they provided me with a blanket and I knocked out well at least I tried to knock out it didn't quite happen like that but I got like at least 15 minutes worth of napping which was great <laughs> <laughs> I came out I was tired I came home and I fell asleep and I did not wake up until like 6, 6 p.m. and my third session which was this weekend I went with my dad and you'll probably see I'm gonna insert that video like after we're done chatting here I'm gonna insert that video so you guys can see what the what the soft uh, chamber looks like and what it looks like outside and what it looks like inside so but yeah like you know if you're going in, into the hyperbaric chamber uh, soft or in, in general like if you go into any of the the chambers you're gonna get some ear poppage yeah, yeah some popping pressure. of it yeah from the pressure so it's like if you're going on an airplane right like an airplane trip and yeah it's you... nothing as bad as long as you pinch your nose and pop it that's... pinch your nose and pop it <laughs> pop it real good <laughs> okay cringy whatever <laughs> <laughs> anyways but that's pretty much you know my dad he thought it was pretty cool um he did just you know say that he had a lot of bad um, ear pops I completely forgot to tell him, so he didn't expect it. <laughs> he was like, what is going on? Kind of panicked. No, he didn't panic, but you know, yeah. He was like, wow, okay, this is interesting. But the benefits like outweigh the ear poppage. And you know, there's a lot of people that are claustropho claustrophobic and just feel that unsettling feeling of being trapped in a bubble. But I can tell you that I'm a little claustrophobic and I can't sit still. So, <laughs> Like I'm, I'm in constant motion, like I'm ordered, like I am like everywhere. It, yeah. it, it can be claustrophobic if, if that's something you're like 
I don't know if it bugs you, but it's not that bad. Usually, yeah. I mean, the ones you you go and you can take in like your uh, headset, you take uh, like your phone and uh, headphones or something like that. Yeah. The thing with headphones is I don't know if you're under pressure, I wouldn't cover my ears. Yeah. I would use a speaker or something. This last time I took my <laughs> I took my headphones. That's a good observation. But okay, so in the heart chamber, you can't take electronics. No. No. In the soft chamber. <laughs> You can take electronics. The ones we're set up with have uh, a fire extinguisher inside, a fire blanket inside, uh, in case there's, usually you don't want to bring anything that has a high, uh, I think it's a high voltage mm -hmm. in whatever device you have. Usually phones and, and stuff like that, or a tablet isn't high enough to, to cause a spark. You just want to be careful. You don't want to like put yourself at risk. These are, these are older like, concerns now too, because they're, yeah. it's for, it, it's things that have happened before in the past, but they don't really apply anymore because of the way the way things are set up now. Like I said, your electronics you just don't have enough to cause a spark in mm -hmm. the chamber. It it would have to be something else, and you'd have to bring like your toaster and your microwave in there with you. <laughs> like you would have to do something that you're never gonna do in the chamber. So there's really not not, not a worry about that. But um, so there's a lower risk now than there was in the past. But in the past, if you did. You know, just the concept being is that you have 100% of two. It's covering your face, but a lot of people mm -hmm. they'll move around and stuff. It's not always sealed around your face, yeah, so it's right. always coming out, coming out. If you're in a chamber for a long time, mm -hmm. that'll build up if you're not venting it out. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys vent out uh, your chambers because I don't know if you're in there long enough. But I, well, it's only like an, an hour, so 60 minute uh, sessions yeah. for me. But if, if you're in there for a long bit of time, they'll vent it out. They'll, they'll pump fresh air into it, so you can have fresh air going through the whole thing. If you don't do it, then you build up all that O2, and, and mm -hmm. there's your there's your uh, your risk. But yeah. like I said, it doesn't really apply anymore because uh, it's just it's not the way things are done anymore. So. so oxygen is like an accelerant to fire. So if there's a fire, if there, you get the spark, and there's a fire, oxygen is just gonna feed the fire. So this is why you know we you know try and avoid having these things. It's just like your kind of common sense. If you yeah. go in your car, you're not gonna try and like you know put a puzzle together while you're driving you, just, yeah. you don't do certain things yeah <laughs> and you'll be fine and really so. like if you're going to the chamber like try and try and use that time as like a, a self-care and just you can do meditation you can just you know if you have your phone you can listen to like you know some meditation music or watch whatever your favorite video um and we're going back to the the headphones like the the airpods or whatever it is like devices that you're using for your ear i would probably not do it if you have an ear or ear problem like a previous something going on because if you cover that and you're and you're getting pressed if it seals it's, it's might give you negative pressure and mm -hmm. you might get some pain from it so yeah i would say maybe not put stuff in your ears in your yeah machine. see this time around i actually used my headphones and i i didn't like the way things were sounding and it was harder to like get the the pressure like to pop the ears it was a little harder so yeah so if anything just you know play i mean you're in a you're in an enclosed environment where people won't really hear what you're listening to I'm gonna insert a clip of like what it looked like outside of the hyperbaric chamber and inside of the hyperbaric chamber. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a clip right now. Stay tuned. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like really quick. So you have a little window. You have have a little fan just in case it gets too warm in here. It actually gets nice and warm. You have a walkie just in case you need to reach out to anybody. You cannot unzip the zipper because we are pressurized. Um, right now, I can have like, right now I have popping in my ears, but that's because the pressure is increasing in here. And I'm getting more oxygen. I have a little window at the end. And, um, we have this little tubing here that connects to my mask. See? They make it really comfortable. So you have a pillow, you can ask for a blanket. Um, and then you have like a little mat here. And some metal wiring to kind of keep the shape and the integrity of the hyperbaric chamber. So I'm gonna be in here for 60 minutes. I actually ordered, I actually got um, 
a package deal from Groupon for this hyperbaric chamber treatment. I got, I believe it's five sessions, or five sessions for 15 minutes, um, hyperbaric chamber time, and um, actually how pressurized is this? You get a PSI 4. So, we'll see. Um, this is actually my third time, and it's my dad's first time. Right now, I don't know if I can see like record, but he's on the other side. Let me see if I can record that. So, my dad is on um, that hyperbaric chamber over there. Alright guys, so I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy my hyperbaric chamber therapy right now. I'm going to just enjoy this and relax and um, I'll get back to you guys later. And this is a little relaxing little long treatment and we're back okay so we hope you like subscribe and uh, share this information with whomever you want to share this information with and my babies grab my tripod Hi, sir. Make no sudden move. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, so <laughs> for the millionth time, we hope. Uh, it was fine the first time. It was fine. I, I can't. <laughs> Look, I keep getting distracted here. This takes a lot of pressure, <laughs> sir. <laughs> you can see his face. <laughs> you can see his little. <laughs> oh! Um, hope you guys like and subscribe and share this information with your family and friends. Do you have anything to say? See ya for the <laughs> fourth time. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it wasn't four times, guys. This is the first time. Alright. See you guys for the next video. Bye.